Alright guys, welcome to another video from Maths World Education and in today's video I'd like to show you uh, the solution uh, and this video is going to be the solution to question number 5 uh, taken from the Step 2 2019 uh, paper. Now uh, this question is a little bit interesting and, and questions like this uh, re uh, regarding the periods uh, do have a tendency to come up from time to time from one step paper to the next. Uh, so I'm glad I'm actually going over this sort of question, I've not actually been over a question like this before and I'd like to remind you guys as well if you haven't had a go at this problem then be sure to pause the video and have a have a proper stab at the, the problem and see how you get on before uh, watching me uh, show you how uh, the solution is done. So what's it talking about here? It's saying the sequence uh, u0, u1 and so forth is said to be a constant sequence if un equals un plus 1 uh, for n equals 0, 1, 2 and uh, all the way up to infinity, I suppose. Uh, so the sequence says to be a sequence of period 2 if un equals u of n plus 2. Uh, and that's starting from n equals 0 and so on. Uh, so it's telling you for the first bit what the um, uh, what the function is of f of x and obviously that's being used to determine what your next value is in uh, the sequence. It's telling us that p is a given real number. Uh, find the values of a for which the sequence is constant. So let's have a look at this first part and see how we um, and actually see how we get on. So basically, for um, uh, for con sequence to be constant, uh, it's actually given us the definition just here. Now the best thing to do is to say, well, on the strength of that, uh, we can see if uh, u one equals u zero, then that is a condition which must be. Uh, fulfilled for the con uh, sequence to be constant. So what's u1, uh, well what's u0 going to be first of all? u0 is going to be equal to uh, a uh, and it gives us that information just here. So therefore we can say that uh, a is going to be equal to um, uh, u1 which is f of a which is equal to uh, p plus a minus p times a. So now all we got to do now is um, uh, basically multiply out the brackets and take everything to the other side. Um, what we actually end up with is a 0 equals p minus ap plus a squared minus a. Now uh, what we can do then, uh, we can actually uh, factorise this further and uh, this is what we actually end up with, uh, 1 minus a and p minus a. And um, and we can see uh, that our solutions uh, are going to be uh, a equals one and a equals p. Uh, so that's the first uh, bit out of the way. Uh, and then it's uh, next. It's saying show that the sequence is period two for some value of a if and only if p is greater than three and p is less than minus one. So I've got a feeling there's going to be a bit more number crunching. Uh, going on. So as before, uh, so I'm going to do the working out up here. Uh, so for um, sequence uh, to be a uh, period of two, I've just put P2 for shorthand, uh, we can see that U0 would actually have to be equal to uh, U2. Uh, so therefore A uh, will be equal to uh, f of f of a. Or actually, um, I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to attack this slightly differently. Um, just, just to keep it in more of a general sense. Uh, we could say, well, un is equal to un plus uh, 2. Uh, so therefore, um, x would have to be equal to f of f of x. Now what is f of f of x? It's just a function of a function and it already tells us what f of x is uh, just here. So we can we can actually see that uh, x is going to be equal to um, f of f of x which is p uh, plus uh, and then a function of x which we mentioned uh, which gets mentioned again is going to be p plus x minus p times x minus p 
uh, and then that's uh, times uh, p plus x minus p times x. So just to make it easier, I've put curly brackets just here to represent what our function of x is, just so, um, well, just to help you guys out a bit so you guys aren't getting uh, confused. Uh, so, so therefore we got x equals, and all we got to do now is just do some uh, number crunching here and see how we uh, get on. So we've got 2px minus p times x plus x minus p all squared, x squared, minus p squared, minus p, x minus p times x. And uh, after after doing all the number crunching and after taking this x to the other side, uh, I'll leave it to you guys to work out the rest because uh, just as an exercise really, just, just so I'm saving time. Uh, but after we done with all the, that should be a zero by the way, after we done with all the multi uh, multiplication and the rearranging we get zero equals x to the four minus two p x cubed plus px squared plus p squared x squared uh, minus p squared uh, times x plus p. Uh, we've done that right. Sorry, that should be uh, that should be an x. And let's take that one step further. So now we should have uh, the following. Uh, we should have zero, uh, which equals. Uh, let's have a look. All right, guys. Uh, sorry about that. I just had a few difficulties there. So what we need to do now, we need to bring the x to the to the right hand side, and what we actually end up with is uh, the following. So we've got uh, zero uh, equals x to the four minus two uh, p x cubed plus p plus p squared times x squared. Minus p squared plus one uh, times x plus p. Now, what you've got here um, is a quartic equation that we can factorise into uh, two quadratics. What I should actually do, because this is actually if and only if you can actually apply this the other way, which is actually going to be useful because it it's asking us to do it's asking us to show uh, some value of a if and only if uh, we get this um, solution for uh, for p. Anyway, like I was saying, uh, what we need to do is to factorise this further. Uh, and what we actually end up with is x squared minus 2p uh, x cubed plus p times p. Hang on, sorry about this, I'm writing this out all over again. Uh, okay, so we've got x squared minus p plus 1 times x plus p and our second term is x squared minus p minus 1 x plus 1. Now what we can actually see here guys, um, best best thing to do is consider both cases. You want to consider you want to consider the case when uh, well does that equal 0 and does this equal zero? And the best way to do is just to use the uh, formula that b squared minus four ac. If it's uh, if it's greater than or equal to zero, then you know uh, then you know that there are solutions uh, for x. And once you've actually done that exercise, you can actually see uh, certainly in this um, first case here uh, that uh, this here does not equal zero. This term. Uh, which leaves us with um, this other term uh, just uh, just here. 
and we can actually see that the conditions are when b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to 0. And that is precisely uh, the case when uh, p minus 1 all squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. And if we actually multiply out these brackets, what we actually end up with is p squared minus 2p uh, minus uh, 3. And if we factorise that, we get uh, p minus 3 and p plus 1, which is which resembles something uh, of uh, what we're actually trying to work towards. Uh, okay, And because, uh, because this has to be greater than or equal to 0, we can see uh, that p must be uh, greater than or equal to uh, 3, or p must be less than or equal to uh, minus 1. Now, um, what can we see? Uh, we can see that um, this isn't the full story because it's actually greater than or equal to. We, and we are interested in, uh, we want to try and prove in the question that p is greater than 3 or p is less than minus 1. So what we need to do now is to set p, let's set p equal to 3 and p equal to minus 1 and uh, see how we uh, uh, get on. So basically when p is equal to minus 1, uh, we can see uh, for this equation to be equal 0, uh, that x must be equal to minus 1. Uh, which, uh, which of course we cannot uh, have, so we can disregard uh, that uh, possibility. And when p is equal to three, uh, that's giving us x equal what? X equals one, which we can't have either. So uh, therefore, uh, p must be uh, less than minus one, or p must be greater than three. And that concludes uh, part uh, one. Of, uh, of question five. Alright guys, so let's look at part two now of uh, question five. Now it's saying sequence of real numbers is defined again u0 equals a and un plus one equals f of un. Uh, now this time uh, you can see that they've actually changed the, uh, the in part one there was a p there so they changed the p for q now and uh, p and q are real numbers. Now this first part is a bit of a tongue twist so it's saying Show that there's no value for a for which the sequence is constant if and only if f of x uh, is greater than uh, x for all x. Now, the best thing to do, I'm going to just ignore this first bit. I'm just going to say, well, sequence is constant. Uh, sorry, uh, sequence is constant if and only if f of x is greater than, uh, uh, greater than x. Now, basically, for, for constant function, um, so... Best way to do uh, best way to deal with these those types of statements is to just break it down into into sort of small and more manageable sort of terminology. Uh, we know for for a constant function uh, x must be equal to uh, f of x, uh, and that and that occurs uh, if and only if x is equal to q plus x minus p times x. Now, if we take the x to the uh, other side, uh, what we end up with is uh, 0 equals x squared minus px uh, minus x uh, plus q. And then, uh, again, we can see uh, that that uh, is going to occur if and only if 0 equals x squared times uh, x squared. So that should be minus p plus 1 times x uh, plus q. Now, basically for a constant function, uh, we've actually come to, basically it has to be constant if uh, we've got solutions, first of all, for this, um, for this uh, quadratic solution here. But if you, if, you look, if, you, if you have a think about it, it's actually, that's actually equal to, um, f of x minus x. Now, if you consider the, um, and we can actually uh, we can actually call this whole thing equal to y. 
So let's just look at the graph here. What's this? What's this quadratic equation actually going to um, going to look like? Well, it's either going to be doing. It's either going to be behaving like this. Uh, again, this is y equals f of x minus x. It's either going to be uh, behaving like uh, this, in which case you've only you've only got one solution, or it's going to be behaving like this. Now, they are the three possibilities for each of these different functions. So, um, I've, I've, actually, I'll just label it there as well. Uh, so that's uh, case one, case two, and. That should be a three, uh, and that's case three. Now, first of all, uh, we it, it's saying here show that there's no value for a for which the sequence is constant if and okay. So first of all, if you consider the first case, there's going to be there's going to be a value there's going to be a value for a, and there you know you got two value uh, you got two values here, uh, two solutions. Uh, but we we try we try to somehow show that, um, uh, that there's that there's no value for a. So if there's no solution, we need to consider the third case. Now that occurs when that occurs basically when uh, y is greater than zero. So uh, so no solution occurs. I should really put if and only if uh, y is greater than zero, so the curve's going uh, above the um, uh, like a, like above the x-axis. But of course, because y is equal to f of x minus x, uh, it's going to occur if and only if f of x minus x is greater than zero, and that is if and only if f of x is greater than x. Okay, so I hope that makes. Uh, Hope that makes uh, sense for you guys. Well, now let's look at uh, the second bit here. Now it's saying, in fact, I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna write this question out again. It's saying, did you say if there is no value of a for which the sequence is constant, then there is no value of a for which the sequence is superior to? Now, first of all, uh, there's no value for a, uh, so we can actually use this bit of information here. So f of x uh, is greater than or equal to x um, if uh, there's no value for a for which the sequence is uh, constant. But what we can do, we can actually uh, we can do a little trick here. We can say that in that case, f of f of x must be greater than f of x. Is that fair? Because you know you can totally do that. Like all I've done is I've just applied the function f to both of these, uh, to both both sides, and in the uh, the inequality will also hold as well due to the uh, due to the nature of uh, of this function as well. And we already know as well that f of x uh, is greater than uh, x. We've already we've already shown we've already shown that from this. Uh, from this bit here. Uh, so therefore, um, oh yeah, and I should really put, strictly speaking, for all x as well. So that basically tells us that there's no solution uh, to the following, uh, to f of f of a. Uh, equals a. Uh, so therefore, uh, we can see that there's no solution uh, for um, a such that the sequence has period two. So I hope that makes sense. Sometimes, it's, sometimes you've just got to take into consideration uh, these uh, these simple uh, these simple things, really. 
Okay. Now you might you might be wondering, well, hang on a sec, don't you think you're jumping to conclusions a bit here, Matt, with this inequality? But like best thing to do, like you know if the function's monotonically increasing, which it is when uh, which it would be if x was uh, if x was greater than zero. And the best thing to do is to just as an exercise differentiate uh, this function here. And you'll see that if if the uh, function's positive for x is uh, greater than zero then uh, the inequality stay the, the same rate, uh, stay in the same direction, uh, which means that we can uh, totally apply uh, this logic and all the other conclusions which follow from that particular point. Okay, guys, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, so we've just got this last bit now. It says, is it true that if there's no value for a for which the sequence is period two, then there's no value for a for which the sequence uh, is constant? Now, um, no, it's not true at all. Uh, so the converse is not true, and the best way to do that is to buy is by um, so you, you can see that so period one uh, implies period two. Uh, we've we've basically just done that in this step here, uh, but uh, the converse is not true. Period two uh, does not uh, imply uh, period one. Now, the best way to attack that is by uh, going about this with a uh, counterexample. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna write down the counterexample just uh, uh, just up here in this um, in this gap just here. So let's um, so let's set uh, p equal to q, and then and then by doing that we can we can work with um, we can work with this first. Uh, equation here for f of x and we can use a lot of the information which we already found in the uh, in the first part uh, so we can use so by using uh, part one um, we know that we know that there's a solution when a is equal to p uh, which is equal to one um, so we know that we've got um, a solution for period one, but for period two, uh, that won't hold at all because uh, p must be greater than uh, three, and uh, p must be uh, less than minus one. Okay. Now you might it might look like I've just pulled up a bunch of numbers there out of a hat, but uh, if you look at here. Uh, when p is one, uh, well, you could just set a equal to one, uh, which means a would be equal to p, which would be equal to one. Uh, so you've got uh, you've got a solution there uh, for a of a period uh, period one, or when the sequence is constant. Uh, however, uh, these values here, uh, p must be less than minus one, but p equals 1 wouldn't work, so you wouldn't actually have uh, a solution for the uh, for period of 2. Uh, and there you have it, that's the counterexample. And I think that pretty much completes uh, question 5 as well. So if any of you guys have got any questions about uh, how I've gone about this solution, then uh, be sure to uh, leave me a comment in the comment section below, and I will do my best to get back as soon as, po as possibly can. Uh, anything else that you want me to talk about, anything that I can do to improve this channel, because it's still a fairly brand new channel, let me know, and I'll um, and I'll do my best to uh, make those uh, changes. Okay, uh, if you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe, and tap that notification bell, we'll be coming out with more content in the very near future. Thank you very much, guys, and see you in the next video.